I made up my mind. I will not agree with everyone. But I will not judge anyone. And I made up my mind. I will not trust everyone. And I will not agree with everyone. But I made up my mind. I will judge no one. And I will love all. Give Jesus a hand. That is what Jesus left in my character after these two weeks. Give him a hand. Amen. Remember? Two weeks ago, I said to you, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Amen? All of us, we got opposition in life. We got people that doesn't like us. We got people that disagree with us. Amen? They don't agree with us. Amen? There's many people that we cannot trust, and some people do not trust you. Say, Lord Jesus, I made up my mind. In your grace, I do not agree with all people. I do, not, I do not trust all people. But I made up my mind, I will judge no one. And I will love all. Give Jesus a hand. Can you do that? I was tested on that one. Now, when, when the Lord said to me, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation, then he said to me, because Satan is going to test all the radical, genuine Christians that live an upright life before God. He's going to test them all because he wants to silence them. I was unsure what their temptation will be. So I said to you, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Listen, you should watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Because the moment you are in, in temptation, it is not so easy to get out. That means that your case has been taken to the courts of heaven. And Satan accused you, and you have failed to do what the Lord and His Word is telling you to do. Now He's got legal right to take you there. And when you enter into the courts of heaven, that's not a place to repent. You should have repented on your way. The Bible says, on your way to court, agree with your adversary. Not in court. In court's too late. On your way to court, agree with your adversary. There's a heavenly court where God is the judge, where Jesus is the advocate for all Christians who, who apply his blood to their lives and who apply their word to their lives. I mean, and all Christians get tested. Peter was tested. All the apostles have been tested. I get tested. You get tested. I mean, and then when we claim to be true Christians, we get tested. Satan wants to silence you. So you get tested on many, many many levels. So Satan wanted to silence you. He, he wanted to silence Peter, but Jesus, the grace that is in Jesus, restored him. Give God a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the bad part is this. If you do not respond to God's word in obedience when he tells you to do so, you will go to the courts of heaven, and when you get accused there, and you did not repent yet, the Bible says you will be thrown into prison by the officers and you will be tormented by demons and you will be in that jail whether you're a Christian or not, even a born-again Christian. You will, you will not leave that jail till you have paid the last penny. Pastor, is that really working that way? It is. Exactly that way. You will stay in that jail. You'll be a Christian. You will come to church. You'll be fine. But in that area where you messed up and disobeyed the Lord, you will be in prison. In that prison can take, take most of the time it takes six years. But this is not before God has warned you and pleaded with you. Because God doesn't want you to end up in that jail. So that's why I preach what I preach. And some people sit there and they look at me and they say, Ah, you're not serious. And then when you enter such a jail, let's take one example, for example. God tell you in his word, give your tithe and your offering. You fail to do that. And he convict you. And Satan observe you're not giving your tithe. And he collect a lot of evidence to accuse you in the courts of heaven. And then God strongly, through a preacher, through his word, through the Holy Spirit, through prophecies, 
speak to you directly that you should give your tithes. Now you fail to give your tithe for two years, for example. God doesn't easily allow you to end up there. For two years or more, he speaks to you through prophets, through preachers, through different people, through his word and through his spirit, through dreams. And you fail to give your tithe. Then it's when Satan got enough evidence, he goes to the courts of heaven. He accuses you in the courts of heaven. Now the Holy Spirit, when Satan is on his way to that court, Holy Spirit will come and he will plead with you. He will give you scriptures. He will say to you, repent. If you fail to repent there, you're in trouble. You will be in that court. And because God is just, he cannot show Satan away. He's a just God. Satan is extremely just. He cannot break his own laws. He cannot break his own ways. And he cannot ignore his own word. He cannot. He's too holy and just for that. Then, when you have failed, now Satan come. You are given over, over, the Bible says, to the officers. They put you in a financial prison. Now your finances, you are going bankrupt. Your business is not working out. Your finances, you get a salary of 50,000 a month, but I tell you, you go to the cash loan and you go bankrupt. And you come and stand in a prayer line. I can pray. Till I'm blue in the face and I can pray and fast. But you're not going to get out of that jail. Because you have ignored his voice for too long. Now this is not God judging you. Not at all. It is not God that wants you in a jail. You have placed yourself in that jail. Not God. You allowed the devil to collect enough evidence of your disobedience. and ignoring God's word, ignoring the way, ways of God. So Satan collected enough evidence. If you repent, even on that God, God has warned you for two or three years. And then when the Satan is on his way to court to go and accuse you, because he's the accuser of the brothers. And when he's on his way to court and the Holy Spirit comes to you, and he quickly, and he speaks to you, he says, repent of this, put this right, put this right, you must know. Satan on his, on his way to court. And you repent there and you make up your mind, I'm going to give my tithe. When Satan gets there, Jesus will stand up on your behalf. And he will say, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. What are you talking about? Then Satan will say, look at the evidence. He's not giving his tithe. Jesus will say to him, he repented. Yes, my blood, the Lord rebuke you. And Satan will flee that court like a scared dog. Give God a hand. Amen. This is the way it's working. It's not working another way. Don't always repent when it's almost too late. You will live a life of repentance. Please. Say to God, don't always repent too late. The problem with Christians, they repent too late. They start to repent when they're in trouble. You should live a life of repentance. Prevention is... Prevention is far better than cure, please. That's why I say to you, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Because if you have entered into temptation, you're in trouble. If a child or a young person or any person for that matter, get tempted with using drugs, which is so common these days. You get tempted with drugs, you get tempted with drugs, etc., etc. You should watch and pray. As a, as a young person. Because I tell you, if you have entered in using that drug, it is not easy to get out. Satan going to prevention. It's far better than cure. It's easier to say no to drugs than try to get out of the habit of using drugs. Anyone will tell you that. The same with sin. And when you have entered into temptation, I mean, when you have entered you are responded to the temptation. You have fall for the temptation. You make the temptation your lifestyle. You have entered into temptation. Now you're in trouble. I mean, do you understand the court? I tell you about court. You understand, friend? There is truly, genuinely a heavenly court where Satan accuses us before our God day and night, it says. But Provision has been made by Jesus' blood. 
If you respond to His blood, how do you respond to His blood? By living a life of repentance, applying His blood to the wrongs in your life, and you say sorry with the intention never to do it again, and you say sorry with the intention to put it right in your heart. Now I tell you, even before you have given your tithe, but you said, sorry Jesus, I ignored you, forgive me. You have said sorry in your heart with the intention to put it right. Even before you had the opportunity to give your tithe, you are clear. Give Jesus' hand. The moment you made up your mind, you said sorry with the intention to put it right. You said sorry with the intention never to do that again. But you had not the opportunity to come to church yet to give your tithes. With that intention, it's enough to stop Satan in his tracks. And the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, when we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And we got an advocate that fight on our behalf. When Satan comes to accuse you and you have said sorry with the intention to put it right, the intention never to do it again. Jesus will stand up and say, sorry, Father, my blood is applied to his life. There's not a case. And the Lord will turn to Satan. I said, what are you talking about, Satan? And there will, they will be a loud, thunderous voice in that court of heaven. And they will say, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Satan and he will shudder in fear and flee that courtroom. Give Jesus' hand. Now, I'm an extremely honest preacher. I will not be accused one day in heaven that I taught, to, to taught you nonsense. I tell you exactly the truth as it is. That's why you get many Christians today. They wait till they're sick. They wait till they're on a sick bed before they repent. Friend, that's almost too late, please. You have now entered into temptation. You have kept on with your sin. Now you want to say sorry. It's almost too late to say sorry. Although the salvation of your soul is more important than the healing of your body. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. Satan goes to the healing of your soul. And the salvation of your soul is more important than the healing of your body. In the name of Jesus. You might think you are right in a certain case. It is not the person who are right according to the details that are the truthful person, but the one with the heart after God. Amen? Satraganitu, it is not correct detail that make you correct, but the spirit in which you do what you do, 